Brazil is a nation with a rich history in football. It is the only nation to have qualified for and competed at all 21, soon to be 22, FIFA World Cups and holds the record for the most World Cup victories with five. Brazil is the largest nation in South America and has a population of over 212 million, the sixth highest in the world. Football is the national sport, so it is no surprise that the domestic league is one of the best on the planet. Today, we take a closer look at how the Brazilian leagues work in Football Manager. This is the Brazilian League Guide. Hello, my name is Anders and today we will be taking an in-depth look into one of the most competitive leagues in the world and breaking down how the playable leagues within Football Manager work. And at the end, we'll give you some ideas of which clubs you should manage in your next save game. On Football Manager 2022, there are three playable tiers in Brazil, along with a whole host of state leagues which fill out nearly a full calendar year of football and create perhaps the busiest schedule that you will find on this game. We'll have a look at how these leagues work, cover the state competitions in a little detail, and then the domestic cup competitions as well. And then at the end, we'll see how qualification works for the continental competitions here in South America. Brazilian football is structured around a calendar year, so with Football Manager 2022 you have the option to start your save game at the beginning of either the 2021 or 2022 seasons. Uh, but for the purposes of this guide we'll be starting with the current 22 season. There are two simultaneous and independent league systems in Brazil, the national system and the state systems. Football Manager does its best to replicate these, but the focus is mainly on the national system here. Uh, the state leagues generally run from around January through to April, whilst the national leagues themselves run from April to about November. So you get a full 11, maybe even 12 months in some states worth of football across the calendar year. Uh, the National League Leagues are the focus today, with the top three tiers being playable on FM22. Serie A is the top flight, with 20 teams and a double round-robin 38-game system, playing each team at home and away. Uh, there are four automatic relegation places down to Serie B, uh, which follows pretty much the same structure. 20 teams, 38 games, home and away, double round-robin, once again, with a straight four up and four down system. Those teams go down to Serie C, which is the lowest playable division in the regular game. There are databases out there which will extend the league system beyond Serie C, but for this guide, we'll just focus on what's on the vanilla game. Uh, it's slightly different Serie C. Uh, there still is 20 teams, but after a single round robin, a match against every team basically, 19 in total, the league is split. From that first stage, the bottom four teams are just automatically relegated into the unplayable leagues down to Serie D. Uh, but the top eight, they move forward into the second stage. These teams are then split into two groups of four, where they play a double round robin for a total of six more games, uh, where the top two teams in each group are promoted to Serie B, uh, and the winners of each group face off in a home and away playoff to determine the Serie C champions. It's worth noting, however, that if you start your game in the 2021 season, the format of Serie C is slightly different. The first stage is split into two groups of 10 teams, where they do a double round robin, so they play each team twice. Uh, the bottom two in each group is then relegated automatically, with the top four heading into the same sort of second stage as in the 2022 format, with four teams going up, and then a head-to-head -head home and away playoff between the top two, t the top teams in each two groups, to determine the Serie C champions. Now let's move on to have a look at who you should manage here in Brazil. The Brazilian leagues are not short of big clubs with the G12 group of clubs winning all but six uh, Serie A titles throughout the history of the league. Uh, and they are the largest and most successful clubs in the country. But there are some of those 12 clubs who have fallen on slightly harder times of late. So will be primed for a rebuild to get them back into the top flight. But before we look at those clubs, we'll have a look at the two teams who are the most recent winners of the Brazilian title. 
First up, we will have a look at Atletico Mineiro, who play in the 61, nearly 62,000 uh, capacity Mineiro Stadium in Belo Horizonte. Uh, they've got great training facilities and youth facilities, pretty average junior coaching and slightly better than average youth recruitment, only two stars in the country here. They've got a continental reputation and have not featured in the top flight for only a single season out of the last 20. If we have a look at their club history, uh, we will see that they have won the Copa Libertadores once and have taken two uh, Serie A titles, including the most recent. Uh, they are one of the most dominant teams in their state, however, taking 46 of the state championships over their history. Uh, next up, we have Flamengo, who have won two of the last three titles here in Brazil. They play at the Maracana, which is nearly 80,000 in capacity. Uh, they've got some pretty good training facilities. Once again, four stars. Youth recruitment is just three and a half. Uh, junior coaching and youth facilities down at two stars, but still pretty impressive for the level they are at. And as we can have a look through their competition history, we can see that they've won the Copa Libertadores twice. They've taken eight Brazilian titles in Serie A. They've won the International Club Champions Cup once as well and plenty of other titles. They've won 37 state championships as well throughout their history. Uh, next, we'll look at the two teams that have won the most Brazilian titles throughout the history of the Serie A League. So we'll start out with Santos in Sao Paulo. They play only at the 16,000 capacity Villa Belmiro Stadium. But if you will remember, they are the club of Pele who played there for nearly 20 years. It is his home club. Uh, they've got incredible youth recruitment, five stars, the best it can be. Uh, their training facilities, youth facilities, junior coaching can be improved but they have pretty impressive facilities. Uh, they haven't won the league in recent seasons, but if we have a look at their history, we can see that they've won eight uh, Serie A titles, three Copa Libertadores, and 22 state championships in Sao Paulo. They've not won the league, however, since 2004. Uh, so they've got a lot of catching up to do in recent years. They are a club which is about mid-table recently, but they can easily be taken back to the top of Brazilian football. Another club from Sao Paulo is Palmeiras, who play at the Allianz Park, which is 43,500-seater stadium. Uh, they've got good training facilities, four stars, youth recruitment, three and a half. Again, youth facilities and junior coaching, just that step below. Uh, but the team who play in green have got a great history in Serie A. As we have a look at their history, they have won 10 uh, Serie A titles over the years. They are the winningest team in the country. They've also got three Copa Libertadores. They last won the league in 2018, so uh, they are up there. They're there or abouts in recent seasons, so they are immediately primed for a title challenge. We'll drop down now into Serie B to look at Gremio, another member of the G12. This club is from Porto Alegro. Uh, they play in the Arena Gremio, which is a 55,500 seater stadium. They've got some great facilities as well, youth recruitment, their highest one. And if we look at their history, you can see that they have won the Brazilian title twice, not in the last 20 years though. If you have a look, when the last time they won the title was 1996. They're definitely a club of the 80s and 90s. They have won the Copa Libertadores quite recently, however, in 2017. But they have fallen on unfortunate times, getting themselves relegated in the last season. Uh, they have been dropped down to Serie B for the second time in the last 20 years. They did, however, bounce straight back up, winning the title in Serie be in 2005 and if you were managing them that would be your immediate task get them promoted back into the big time and get themselves back as a factor in continental football another club who have fallen on hard times recently is Cruzeiro who are from Belo Horizonte uh, they play in the Mineiro Stadium as well uh, again great training facilities good youth recruitment the youth facilities and junior coaching however is definitely one that needs improving they have fallen on incredibly hard times they've been stuck in Serie B for multiple seasons now if we have a look at their history they are four times national champions two time Copa Libertadores champions as well having last won a back-to-back -back Serie A title in 2013-2014 before getting relegated just five seasons later and getting stuck mid-table of Serie B, finishing 14th in the 2021 season. 
The final club in Serie B that we're going to look at is Vasco da Gama from Rio de Janeiro. Uh, they've got some good youth recruitment and their general facilities are probably a little bit subpar, but they are down in Serie B and have been uh, for the last season or two. If we have a look at their history, they have won the Brazilian title four times. They've also taken a Copa Libertadores as well. Uh, but since getting relegated in 2020, they finished mid-table last season, about 10th. So that is probably where they're going to be around this time, this campaign. But they are a club with great history who will be primed to get back into the top flight. So the rest of the G12 clubs that we haven't touched on are Internacional from Porto Alegro, uh, Fluminense and Botafogo from Rio de Janeiro, Corinthians and Sao Paulo from Sao Paulo. Uh, and there's one other club that we want to touch on. This is the club with narrative that I want to look at today. This is RB Bragantino. And that RB stands for Red Bull. So they are the latest Red Bull club. So they will be expecting to quickly rise up the ranks. And as you can see from their history, if we have a look in greater detail, that is exactly what they've done. Down in the third tier, as of 2017, they have bounced straight back up. So winning promotion in 2018, straight away winning Serie B in 2019, and immediately becoming a factor in Serie A, their first time in the top flight, finishing 10th. And then last season finishing sixth. So they're in continental uh, football right now. They're in the Libertadores this season. And they are primed to become one of the big clubs. They're not in the G12 group just yet. Under your stewardship and the leadership of Red Bull, they could quite easily become a leading force in Brazilian football. So we did mention state championships, so we're going to have a quick look at Campeonato Paulista, which is the Sao Paulo state championship. As you can see, there are 16 teams in this one. It's basically teams from the same state playing against each other in slightly different formats across the country to earn bragging rights in the state. Uh, lower down the pyramid, if you get down to Serie D, they do have much more meaning, so the teams who finish highest in the state championships who aren't in the top three flights qualify for Serie D but that element of the state championships isn't in Football Manager because uh, Football Manager only goes down to Serie C uh, so they probably have a little bit less importance in the game than they do in real life. So continental qualification is the last element we haven't touched on. And as you can see here from the rules page of Serie A, uh, the top seven teams, give or take, depending on cup winners, uh, qualify for the Copa Libertadores with the further six going into the Copa Sudamericana. So the Libertadores is the equivalent of the Champions League, whilst the Sudamericana is the second tier continental equivalent, basically, of the Europa League. So if we have a look at the Libertadores, you can see that Brazilian teams have been pretty dominant in recent years. Palmeiras winning the last two, Flamingo winning in 2019, Gremio, who are now obviously down in Serie B, winning in 2017. It's been an all-Brazilian final the last two campaigns as well, with Palmeiras beating Flamengo and Santos in the most recent finals. One final competition that we haven't touched on is the Copa do Brasil, which is the National Cup competition, uh, most recently won by Atletico Mineiro, who took the double last season. Uh, but Serie B side Gremio, who obviously got relegated down to Serie B in the 2021 season, were runners-up in the last two competitions. This is basically the top 80 clubs in Brazil fighting it out in an FA Cup-style competition. So there we have it, a look at the Brazilian leagues on Football Manager 2022. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the league structures and an idea of some clubs you can manage if you go down to Brazil in your next save game. If you are not a subscriber to the channel, please hit this button over here. And if you've enjoyed the league guide, there should be a playlist appearing about here where my hand is with some more of the similar content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.